A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints, January 3rd, Blessed Matthew of Girigenti, Bishop and Confessor, First Order. Although the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus was removed from the revised Roman calendar of 1969, it was retained as a memorial in the common Franciscan liturgical calendar, which received approval afterwards. The Franciscan Order has celebrated the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus in January since 1530. About 200 years later, 1721, it was extended to the entire Church. The devotion to the Most Holy Name of Jesus means devotion to the God-Man, Jesus Christ Himself, as the Saviour of mankind. That is what the name Jesus means. In a particular way, this devotion is practiced by never using the name of Jesus in vain or in a profane manner, but always pronouncing it with reverence and love, and invoking it with confidence in its power, especially in time of temptation or trial. The apostle of this devotion, the one who was responsible for the popular devotion to the most holy name of Jesus, was the great Franciscan mission preacher, St. Bernardin of Siena, who for more than a quarter of a century brought spiritual health to the people of Italy through his preaching of the Holy Name, just as St. Peter healed the lame man at the gate of the temple by virtue of the Holy Name. Acts 3.6 Whenever St. Bernardin entered the city on his apostolic journeys, he had a banner with the name of Jesus on it carried before him, and this banner was planted next to the pulpit when he preached. In his sermons, when he mentioned the name of Jesus, he held up a card with the monogram IHS inscribed on it in large gold letters. On this great Franciscan feast day, we will briefly reflect on the life of a saintly co-worker of St. Bernardin. Matthew, born at Girgenti on the island of Sicily, entered the Franciscan order when he was quite young. When he had completed his studies and had been ordained a priest, the desire to enter upon a more perfect observance of the Franciscan rule led him to transfer to the observant reform which was being promoted by St. Bernardin of Siena. St. Bernardin soon perceived the outstanding qualities of the young religious and took him with him as a companion on the missions that he was then giving throughout Italy. By his ardent zeal, Matthew was instrumental in the conversion of numerous sinners and in rekindling the flame of piety where it had long since grown cold. In imitation of his master Bernardin, he did all in his power to promote devotion to the holy name of Jesus. Believing that religious perfection is particularly meritorious before God, Matthew strove earnestly to promulgate the perfect observance of the rule of St. Francis. He went to Spain, where he was successful in introducing the observance in many convents. Then he went to his own country of Sicily, where, with the approval of the Holy See, he established several convents and labored with much success among the people. In honor of the name of Jesus and that of his Blessed Mother, Matthew gave every convent he founded the title of Saint Mary of Jesus. About this time, the Bishop of Girgenti died, and clergy and laity joined in the request to have Matthew as their chief pastor. He resisted at first, but Pope Eugene IV commanded him to accept the appointment. He then discharged his office so well that his diocese was soon in a flourishing condition. He took vigorous action against the prevalent vices and disorders. As a result, powerful enemies denounced him to the Pope. The gold was to be tried in the fire. Matthew was called to Rome by Pope Eugene IV to answer the charges brought against him, but the inquiry resulted in such a clear justification of the bishop that the Pope declared him innocent and sent him back with honour to his diocese. However, not long after, Matthew, worn out by his labours, voluntarily resigned his office in order to return to a Franciscan convent and prepare himself for death. For several years, Matthew then suffered from severe maladies, and thus purified, he entered the eternal bliss of heaven. He died in the convent at Palermo in 1451. His body was taken to the church on an open stretcher. When the procession arrived before the high altar, to the amazement and terror of all present, the deceased prelate raised himself on the litter, adored the blessed sacrament with folded hands, and then lay back again. Numerous miracles occurred at his grave, and the people honoured him as a saint from the time of his demise. Pope Clement XIII confirmed the veneration paid to him, and later Pope Pius VII renewed this confirmation. 
all for Jesus. Consider that blessed Matthew not only preached devotion to the holy name of Jesus, but in the very active life that he led, he always did everything for Jesus. He frequently recalled how our divine Saviour came down from heaven, spending thirty years in a poor, hard life, sparing himself no labour in the course of his preaching. Yes, exposed himself to the most violent persecution in order to announce his holy doctrine, and finally submitted to bitter suffering and the most painful, disgraceful death in order to redeem us. For that reason, nothing seemed too difficult for Matthew in order to win souls for Jesus and to promote his interests. Was it not for you too that Jesus made a complete oblation of himself? Are you also filled with zeal and do you make sacrifices to further the interests of your holy religion and the salvation of souls? Do you at least sincerely endeavour to make your own soul pleasing to Jesus? Consider that in conducting his missions for love of Jesus, Blessed Matthew laboured above all to root out vices. That must also be our main objective, to prevent offences against God, above all in ourselves, but also in others in as far as we can. If we wish to be followers of Jesus, we must never, for the sake of a creature, do or permit others to do anything displeasing to God. Yes, we ought rather, says the venerable Thomas Akempis, choose to have the whole world against us than offend Jesus. And you may never, he continues, desire to be singularly praised or beloved, for this belongs to God alone, who has none like unto himself. Neither desire that anyone's heart should be much taken up with you, but let Jesus be in you and in every good man. What is there, perhaps, in your heart that is displeasing to Jesus? Consider that, imitating blessed Matthew's love of Jesus, we should not be satisfied with merely preventing evil. We must also do all in our power to promote whatever is good by endeavouring to spur others, but especially ourselves, to greater perfection. Above all, we should strive to detach our heart more and more from all inordinate affection to creatures and to ourselves, so that in all our good works our purpose and intention may be directed to God alone. If you seek in others your comfort, says Thomas Akempis again, you will more often often meet with loss. If you seek yourself, you will bring yourself to your own ruin. But if in all things you seek Jesus, truly you shall find Jesus. Here on earth for your consolation, and hereafter as your eternal joy in heavenly bliss, you shall find Jesus. Often examine the sincerity of your intention. Prayer of the Church We beseech thee, O Almighty God, grant us at the intercession of blessed Bishop Matthew, thy confessor, that as he was inflamed with love for the most holy name of thy Son, so we also, being imbued with this love, may strive to despise what is earthly and to love what is heavenly. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.